highlights channel of the Ranveer show. This is TRS Clips. I want to talk about Mount Kailash. What is its significance in Tibetan Buddhism? Ji. For Tibetans, because it is in Tibet. Yes. Every single Hindu person wants to visit Kailash at some point, especially because of internet culture nowadays. Ji. People have openly spoken about how it is a life-changing experience. I want to know one. Have you visited? No, yourself. I haven't had the fortune yet. Two. Is it something you study about? We know about it. Yes. So, what is it from the Tibetan perspective? Uh, from a Himalayan Buddhist perspective, and from a Tibetan perspective, uh, Mount Kailash has, as far as I know, two main uh, significance. One is that the spiritual significance is that it is the abode of Chakrasambara and Vajrayogini. They are two very important deities, um, gods, uh, that we practice in my particular lineage, the Drupa lineage, and also a few other lineages. You see this meditation belt I'm wearing? Mm. It the blue symbolizes Chakrasambara. He has many different forms. The red symbolizes Vajrayogini. Sounds a lot like Shiva and Parvati. That's yeah, what about male and people. female. So like mm. we said, it is what it is. How we interpret it according to different faiths and beliefs. So the spiritual significance is that it is the abode of Chakrasambara, Kholo Dimcho, and Vajrayogini, Dorji Pagmo, or Dorji Naljurma. A uh, historical significance is that the great yogi of Tibet, Milarepa, he had somewhat of a wrestling match <laughs> on Mount Kailash with an adversary. And you know, like when you watch, uh, when you see Mount Kailash, you see like this kind of line, you know? Yeah. Uh, we say that uh, they were fighting over a pot and the pot, the vessel rolled down and created this. <laughs> so, yeah, two different uh, stories that we talk about Mount okay. Kailash. You said it's home to those deities. But technically, deities are a form or a format of God, right? It's just God manifesting itself as something recognizable for simpler beings called human beings. Mm. But I have understood when it comes to deities, by understanding the culture of deities in India itself, mm -hmm. that deities are just stronger in some geographical locations. True. True. What I've also understood is that there's a higher realm called the astral world, which is also around us. Okay. Deities exist much more strongly there. But maybe the portals into our physical realm are at those geographic locations. Yeah. Uh, you can say that. I think uh, I visited lots of uh, holy sites. Of course, I never had the chance to go to Tibet and visit the holy sites there. But in our own country, we have many different um, holy places or different deities. And I visited, for example, in Himachal, there is a place, uh, there is a mountain. And that is also one of the abodes. Like we own different homes, right? Yeah, the privileged own various homes, one house in Delhi, one in Mumbai, and so on. So it's a bit like that, I think. This could be your main home, mm. but you have another house in Delhi <laughs> and Bangalore. Mm. So I think uh, a deity has a main seat, but then because of certain practitioners and they've attracted the energy, you know, due to certain practices, um, they ha they create other abodes. So in Himachal, yeah, there are there is one very special place, a mountain, and we our Guruji said that it is the abode also of Chakra Samvan and Vajrayogini outside Tibet. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there supposed to be a significance of you visiting this place? Um, for the deity, obviously not, but for myself, yes, so that I can connect uh, deeper to the deity. The Purpose of deities in Buddhism, at least in Himalayan Buddhism, Vajrayana Buddhism, is that we try to transform ourselves. The main goal of Vajrayana is to transform ourselves rapidly instead of wasting too much time because life is very short and we don't know in our next life whether we will be reborn as humans or not. Even if you are born as human beings, we don't know whether we will encounter the Dharma or a Guru get the chance to practice the dharma and so on. So we recognize our good fortune in this life. 
and uh, we try to make the most out of it so we don't waste our time a deity is how can i say we try to we practice a deity uh, when you go into retreat a guru will uh, tell you as per your lineage that you go and practice this deity 6 months and to connect to the deity the main connection point portal is the mantra physically you sit uh in a meditative posture verbally we call them the three doors body speech and mind physically you sit in the meditative posture verbally you chant the mantra and mentally you visualize the deity so using the three doors available to you three gateways you connect you enter the portal or you let that deity enter your portal you visualize it in your heart in our mind yes which is in your heart according to uh it's difficult to explain because mind is very mysterious and i wouldn't really necessarily say that the mind resides only in the heart i think the body's the heart is kind of like you know where it kind of revolves around mm. but the mind as it expands it can expand beyond this room beyond the city and it can enter it can expand into the minds of other people so you will not only hear your thoughts you will hear the thoughts of other people around you so yeah consciousness That's, yeah the consciousness can expand in yes. a state of higher meditation yes and then eventually when you reach a certain point you know everything mm. you see everything so these are playlists made especially for you we've tailor made learning experiences for you the rs clips